Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord is good. So you are welcome to uh, our live broadcast today. It's a Bible study. Praise the Lord under the platform of Grace Finishers Assembly uh, via the Facebook. Hallelujah. Okay. So well, for, for, for some time now we have, I mean we have gotten into to, to start speaking on uh, spiritual warfare. We actually started from the book of Matthew, from the book of Matthew chapter uh, chapter 16. Praise the Lord. Because we saw when Jesus Christ made a, a statement as regarding the response of Peter to the question he asked um, earlier, he asked them at the time that uh, who do uh, men say that I, the son of man, am? Praise the Lord. And then only Peter was able to answer right when Jesus Christ looked at them and said, who do you say that I, the son of man, am? Hallelujah. Amen. And it's really been revelational. God has been pouring a lot of revelation, uh, uh, you know, uh, to us. You know, and one of the profound things that I want, I don't want us to, uh, I don't want us to lose is that God is building his church upon the revelation of the word. God does not build his church upon spiritual gifts. He builds his church. He's building his church on the revelation of the word of God. Any church that is being built on spiritual gifts will last. When, when men of God, when ministers of the gospel begin to display spiritual gifts much more than the teaching of the word of God, that church will not last. That church will not fulfill the will of God. Even if that church lasts till end time, that church would have put a lot of people in bondage instead of instead of taking them to Jesus for Jesus to liberate them and make use of them to reach out to the entire world. It's important we need to understand this. Everything that must come from every church, every man of God is the lifting up of Christ. Is the lifting up of Christ. It's important. God said he honors his word above his name. Now, he tells us that God's word is of great essence, that nothing, nothing, nothing can compare to the word of God being lifted up. And the moment we lift up the word of God, Christ is being lifted up. Christ is being lifted up. Hallelujah. Amen. The moment we lift up the word of God, you know, that Christ is being lifted up. Hallelujah. Amen. It's important we need to understand this. Amen. So my, our encouragement, let me just tell you this, as a believer, as you're watching as a believer, key into the word of God. Live by the word of God. Stand by the principles of God's word. Don't, don't pursue miracles. It's good that you, did, you, you, you have need to place your needs before the Lord. We all need one miracle or the other. But that should not be the dominant factor of your being alive. It's, it, you know, that you have miracles, that you have miracles does not mean that you're going to live your life totally fulfilled. There are people that have had miracles and yet they are not, they are not really serving the Lord. They are not really following the Lord. They are not being discipled. It is not people who, it is not all, everybody that has miracles, that have received miracles from the Lord that are true disciples of Christ. What makes all disciples I, I, it, it's not it's not miracles what makes us disciples of christ is the word of god the word of god is the greatest transformer of all times the word of god transforms us second corinthians 3 18 we all with an open face behold as in a glass beholding as in a glass the gl glory of the lord we are changed to the same image from glory to glory when you look into a mirror what do you see physical mirror you see a reflection of yourself but when we look at the word of God like the Bible tells on the book of James uh, that this word of God is perfect law of liberty and so is the best mirror but when we look into the mirror of the word of God that's also spoken in second Corinthians of the three verse 18 as confirmed by by James uh, by by James also now it also it uh, you know it, it means that the moment we look we look into this perfect law of liberty we don't see ourselves first. We see God first. 
See, if you don't see God first, you can't see you. If I don't see Jesus from the world, I cannot see me. I can't see me at the level that I am. I remember I've said I've said this for some time now. There are three things you must always put in cognizance. It's important. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Know who you are. Know where you are. And the, the best person in your life. And the best person in your life is, is God. Praise the Lord. And you cannot know yourself. You cannot know who you are until you know God. It's important. So the more God reveals himself to us, the better we will become. Getting to know ourselves and getting to assess where we are, our journey so far, and where we are going to. See, we're going somewhere. I tell you the truth. The church is going somewhere. The church is not a religious place. Christianity is not, it's not, it's not a form of religion. Christianity is a way of life. Way of life that started somewhere and going somewhere. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is our final journey. Jesus is our final bus stop. Jesus is our destiny. We're going to be like him. We are being, we are becoming like him. You, when we give our life to Christ, you know, we, we, we are babes in Christ. And so we're, we're expected to grow, to look like Jesus, to be like Jesus. So everything God has given unto us in his word is to make us look like him, is to transform us. We've got to live by the word of God and not by miracles. It's unfortunate too many people, too many believers, and even some pastors have been, they have followed the ways of people. They follow the ways of people, you know, and not that just because they want the crowd and they want, they want their, 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 their ends to be met, you know, in other words, have things working around for them, comfort, or they want to be comfortable, they have to have, they want to have money, they want to have all that. But listen, God, Jesus Christ says, seek you for the kingdom of God and his righteousness yes. and every other thing shall be added. Did you see that? Seek you for the kingdom of God. Now, how do you see the kingdom of God if you don't put his word as number one? It is the word of God that has revealed the kingdom of God to us. It is the word of God that has revealed the agenda of God's kingdom to us. It is the word of God that has that revealed Jesus to us. It is the word of God that revealed God to us. I, 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 at the time, I didn't know God. I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know his word. I didn't know his word. But I knew church. The church that, our, that we were giving, our, our, our family church, you know, and all that. You know, a big church. You know, you just grow up. You're going to church. You just go to church, you know, and all that. You don't even care reading the Bible. You know, you don't care checking out what the priest says, what the, what the priest says. We already know what the, what, how to respond to whatever the priest says, you know, and all that. We have all this recitation that we say. I didn't, that was not the word of God. And because it was not the word of God, I didn't know God. Many of us then didn't know God. I thank God that a lot of people have come out from such kind of churches, you know, and all that to, to you know, to come into the body of Christ. You can be in a church and you are not in the body of Christ. It is not everybody that is a Christian that, that's in the body of Christ. It's not everybody that's a Christian that's a member of the body of Christ. It's not everybody that's a Christian that's a child of God. Yes, God created us. God is our God. But God, to a lot of people, is not their father. So, and it is the word of God that reveals God to us being our father. As a matter of fact, the very first thing that is revealed to us about God is God being our father. I tell you the fact. It's not enough to know that God is the one who created the whole world. Yeah, you may have that revelation, you may have that understanding through the word of God that it is God who created the whole, whole world. And that is by revelation, by, by, by head knowledge rather. The Bible tells us that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the spirit of God moved over the surface of the waters. We, we, we know that. We know God created and many of us have that. I had that, that God is the one who created us. But that God who created us, I, I couldn't feel him. I didn't know him. Why? Because I didn't know his word. Now, I, there was a church 
quite well, but that church was not founded by the revel on, uh, uh, on the revelation of the word of God. And so we see, we, we've seen something in the book of Matthew chapter 16, that Jesus Christ said he will build his church, and he, he was going to build it. The, the, that means building his church on the revelation that Peter released. What was the revelation of Peter? Peter said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, I said, Blessed are thou, son of Barjona, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. In other words, until we get a revelation from God, we're not going anywhere. Nobody gets successful without revelation from God. He said, he said, my father has revealed this to you, not flesh and blood. And so we need to have revelation of God. See, I tell us if I, let us pray to have revelation of God every time. In, in your work, in your workplace, in, 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 in your doing your daily activities, in facing the day and all that, let's seek to know the will of God. In your choice of marriage, we must seek to know the will of God. If you don't know the will of God, you are you can never be successful. It doesn't matter in the likeness of people who are the rich, uh, richest person on the face of the earth. If they don't know God, all those riches are dunk. If Apostle Paul could say that, you know, the things that are behind him, you know, and all that, he counts them, all his achievements, he counts them as dunk, that he may win Christ. So your achievement, your success, no matter how much you have, you may be a millionaire, your success is nothing apart from God. And so God must reveal himself to you. So if you don't know God through his word, through his word, you cannot, you, you can't be successful before God. Your success has no pass. Mm. Your success will not pass. And, 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 and will, not, will not be passed as being good before the Lord. It's important we need to know this. Praise the Lord. Okay. Cornelius was a very rich man in the Bible. He was rich. Cornelius was rich. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But again, he, he was giving alms to the poor all the time. Very prayerful. He was rich. There are a lot of people listening to me right now. You are rich. You have all the money. But you are not as prayerful as as a, as a Cornelius. You know, Cornelius was prayerful. Cornelius was a giver. He was a giver. He kept giving. He was a religious man. But you know, all that he did, all that he did were not enough to qualify him for heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. Otherwise, God wouldn't be sending Peter to talk to him about 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 being born again, about being filled with the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and prophesying and speaking in tongues, you know, came to us through the New Testament after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's important we need to understand this. And so that's the reason if you say you are born again, you've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you've got to have the power of God upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying in essence is that the revelation of God's word, it's very, very important. We need the revelation of God's word in everything. Any situation you find yourself, whatever confusion you are in, whatever thing that is that is bedeviling you, whatever thing, whatever circumstances, in, in, you know, you need to seek to know the will of God. Until you know the will of God, you will not you will not win. Until you know the will of God and you do it, you will not overcome. Until we know the will of God, we will not be the person that God wants us to be. That's the issue. Now let's look at let's look at a little bit of uh, let's look at religion a little bit okay now religion is a way that man has crafted to get to god but christianity or as in life of christ is a way that god has already made to find man to come down to man it's not I, I, I cannot go to God of my own accord i cannot go to god of my strength i cannot create a path to god that i don't know his word that's 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 the issue in the world today. Too many people are religious. They have they have they they, have, they, have, they have been, they've been born into the religion of their fathers, born into the religion of their fathers. Whether it is Christianity, whether it is Muslim, whether it is Hinduism, whatever it is, you know, they, they were born into it, and so they they have carved out a way. The same thing about people who are traditionalists. They make gods. They make gods 
in, in different images, images of animals, images that, that look like uh, a, a human beings, but not human beings, they cannot speak. And they say, this is, this is God. Like issues about Ogun, like issues about, about um, you know, uh, what do you call it, Ogun, what else? You know, all those, all those strange gods and all that. People, people, the devil came to man and made man to create that, you know, and, and things that are, you know, but this is how many people, people have gone far. They are too lost entirely and they call it religion. And then, you know, you have cases where people, okay, I'm not worshipping all those gods, strange gods made with hands and all that. Okay, but I believe there is God. So now I go to church. But yet I go to church and I don't know him. It's, it's important. Many people will end up in hell. A lot of churches have employed, have em a lot of churches, uh, uh, what I'm trying to say, Satan has employed a lot of churches to run people to hell. Why? Because those churches were not founded on the revelation of God's word. They are not teaching the word of God. It appears they are teaching the word of God. But they are not teaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. They are not teaching about Jesus who died on the cross, who resurrected. They are not teaching about Jesus who they ought to receive by being born again. They are not teaching about Jesus who said, if I don't go, if I go, I will send the promise of the Father to you, you know, and say, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you know, and all that. I'm, 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 I'm telling us profound truth. So there are a lot of churches that will not, they, they have become agents to make people troop into hell. And then you see, uh, when you stay in a church where the leader has sealed this word, how has covered, or leaders have covered the word of God. They've covered the Bible. they cover covered the aspect where the Bible says, except the man is born again, he will not enter the kingdom of God. They've covered it, except the man is born of the water and of the spirit, he will not enter the kingdom of God. they covered it by their foot, you shall know them. They cover, they've covered it and all that. So they covered it and all that, and then they cover the people from sin. And then some people who see, who see the truth, who receive the word of God, they come out of that church. They do. And I'm glad to say I'm happy I came out. I came out of the church that I was before. My parents' church. We saw something in the book of, uh, in the book of Revelation. Jesus' letter to the seven churches. Different kinds of churches. Seven, seven types of, seven types. Seven types. Praise the Lord. The dead church. The compromising church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay? We, we talked about the faithful church. We talked about uh, the persecuted church. We talked about um, corrupt, um, corrupt, church. corrupt church. Yes. The dead church. The dead church. Corrupt church. Seven of them. Only two. Only two. The faithful church and the persecuted church did very well. Others seem to do a little bit, but, you know, worse off. We have the loveless church. The loveless church. They love themselves, but they don't love God. And we have a lot of churches like that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. And so let's go back to what we're talking about spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. Let me say this. For every believer, every believer, a child of God must understand warfare. It's not just about love. Must understand warfare. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I wrote down something on the Facebook. You know, uh, I think it was, it, was, it was this week. You know, I wrote down something on the Facebook. Praise the Lord. And this was what I said on the Facebook that, you know, that uh, I, 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 um, 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 when it comes to, um, I, I, try, I try and remember or uh, paraphrase in, in, in a way. Okay, now listen to me. Uh, um, uh, it, it, when couples marry, when couples marry, they, 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 they take love. They carry love. They, they enter they enter marriage based on love. It's not only love. The, the God does not only want us to be skillful in, in showing love to one another. He also wants us to be skillful in handling crisis. He wants us to be skillful in handling warfare. He wants us to be skillful in being able to engage the devil in a warfare and win over him. So a lot of marriages or couples that enter marriage, they don't know what warfare is. And that's the reason many marriages are broken. Because they don't know, they are not able to interpret the challenges that have come between them as being part of warfare. That they ought to have, be, to have had skill, enough word of God, revelation from God's word to deal with. 
and it's sad as I'm speaking right now. As I'm speaking right now, it pains me in my heart. Where we pursue love, everything seems to be love. Love seems to consume everything entirely. You know, take takes our attention, and then we enter married. You know, and all and all. Every believer should be taught warfare before entering marriage. A single. As, as a youth, the moment you are born again, you ought to understand. Jesus said, I will build my church. Uh, by this time, nobody was born again at the time. I said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against. Right there, you we see the introduction of warfare. He said, I will build my church. And when you talk about building, building is talking about it's talking about followership. It talks about uh, uh, discipleship. It talks about um, you know equipping. It talks about um, uh, envisioning. It talks about service. It talks about commitment. So Jesus Christ was saying, "I am I'm building my church. I'm going to have followers. I'm going to build them to look like me. I'm going to build them to be strong." I'm going to build them. I'm going to give them vision. I'm going to give them assignment. And they need to be committed. And in their commitment, and they be, they be like me and be strong. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Do you see that? In other words, God does not want us to be ignorant of the gates of hell. They don't want to be ignorant of the warfare that we're in. Praise the Lord. Whether, whether right now there's no you don't seem to have any battle over you over your head, you're so much comfortable. There's still a battle raging over your head. Satan wants your head, Satan wants your life, Satan wants your heart, he wants everything from you, he wants to get you. And so we need to understand. You can imagine where, where people lack this knowledge, what has happened to them. This is the reason why people are committing fornication and adultery. I'm not talking about unbelievers. If you see unbelievers are committing fornication and adultery, they are actually they are actually practicing their sin nature. So it's not new. Adultery and fornication to unbelievers not new, but to a believer, but Jesus Christ said that this these sins this ought not to be mentioned, not to be once named among us because we are saints. We are saints. If believers understand the warfare they are in, somebody will not commit a child of God will not go committing fornication. We're not even living there, but people are living in there. A child of God will not go committing adultery. Even the man, even men and women of God that are messed up, it's because they don't understand what spiritual warfare is. Spiritual warfare is attached alongside, alongside building, becoming like Jesus. Satan will not want you to be like Jesus. Satan wouldn't want the church to, to raise up people that will look like him. And so he will fight them tooth and nail to make sure they don't get there. Mm. And many are backsliding. I, I, see, I, I, can, I can go on to tell you examples of examples. Well, I've, been, I've been in ministry for quite a while. I've said that ministry a long time before I joined, I, we joined Fountain of Light in 1993. But God went up and told us to go, myself and my wife, to go to Fountain Light to consolidate ourselves in the world. And I thank God for my pastor, Pastor Tao Otukoya, and Pastor Pimbo then. Hallelujah. Amen. The blessed memory now. And I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for what they're equipping. I give God the glory. I give God the praise. I'm sorry, please. You, you don't be offended. Don't be afraid when I keep talking about Pastor Tao, I keep talking about Pastor Mimbo, or I, I, I keep talking about Dr. John Apami. Praise the Lord, the general vassal of Christian Teaching Center, Zaria, or, or worldwide. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. They laid the foundation. I saw, see, this thing I'm telling, uh, this pattern, I, I saw it in their life. Holiness and warfare. Holiness and warfare. Holiness becoming like Christ and then engaging in warfare and winning, making sure that Satan does not win over them. But pastor will not allow Satan to win over him. He loves God. He, he has taught us to love God. And this is what I'm teaching my people. And this is what we ought to teach. See, our issue of prosperity and finances is not here now. Jesus said, seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All of us don't have to be a millionaire. Praise the Lord. There's no promise in the Bible that says we should be a millionaire. God only talk about abundance. At your level of knowledge, abundance, you can be enjoying your own abundance at the level of, at the, at the level of your uh, knowledge of your faith. And you are contented with what God has given unto you. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is no millionaire. Christians who are millionaires, when they get to heaven, that will have plenty, plenty reward. No. We live by faith. So we got to know God. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we have already broken down some, some things. We've talked about some things and all that. And now we are properly into the warfare thing. And then we now, we now went to the book of Ephesians right. chapter 6. So let's look at the vision chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, normally where people would like to start is, is verse, verse 12. He said, for we rest not against flesh and blood. That is just it. That's the engagement. Jesus Christ said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, oh God, I just cannot go away with it. When he builds the church, what's the essence of building? He's building church strong to advance forward. To advance forward to the gates of hell. To tear down the citadels of Satan. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Ever since Satan was cast down, he was Lucifer, he was cast down from heaven and he became Satan, became the devil, the evil one. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ever since then, he has been cast out. He's constantly been cast out. He's constantly been cast out until when finally he will be cast into the lake of fire. The bonnet we suffer and brimstone. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And every one of us as God's children should behave like Christ. Jesus Christ said, I behind Satan as lightning fall from the sky. See, I want to tell you, child of God, Satan has already been defeated for you. He has no power over you as a child of God. Same thing with this coronavirus. Coronavirus has no power over you as a child of God. Believe it. That's scripture. That's scripture. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. No plague can be above. No plague can be uh, can be uh, uh, can, can no plague is more powerful than Satan. If Satan, if indeed he has some power left on him, wicked power left on him. So if Satan, the master of darkness, evil, of evil, Bible call it evil genius. You know, if Jesus Christ had uh, has defeated him, then what what are sicknesses and disease? Where would they stand? The word of God has power to consume it. And as I'm speaking right now, I don't, I don't know what you're going through. Ill health. I rebuke that symptom. Amen. I come against that, that satanic oppression over you. I come against it. Amen. Some Christians have grown to a point where they, they've come to a point where they believe that the enemy is always attacking them. The devil shoot them arrow. They shot them arrow today. Tomorrow they shot them arrow in their leg. They shot, they shot them arrow at their back. They shot them arrow on their way. They wake up and they say, yeah, they have waist pain. They shot them arrow. Oh, one Tamil offer. They shot me arrow. They shot me arrow. And they don't know that even the statement they make uh, leaves, leaves, leaves the door open for the enemy to keep attacking them because that's what they believe. Now, I believe that there's warfare, but I don't believe that Satan is going to have power over me. I believe that God has given me victory over the enemy. Can I have an amen? amen. Praise the Lord. So you are better believe in that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We, are, we, we engage in the spiritual warfare. But guess what? Hallelujah. Amen. It's a victory warfare. Yes, <laughs> if you've never had that. It's a victory warfare. Not fighting warfare. It's a victory warfare. Why, why do I mean that? Uh, oh, the Bible says fight the good fight of faith. Uh -uh. Why would the Bible say fight the good fight of faith? Why did he say good fight? Oh, come on, talk to me. Why would Jesus Christ say good fight? Through, people, uh, through Apostle Paul. To Timothy, fight a good fight of faith. Why would you, why would you call it good fight? Fight is not good, but there are some fights that are that are good. Some fights, very good. You know why it's good? It's good because at the end, <laughs> praise the Lord, the winner emerges. Praise the Lord, Amen. Amen. And Christians are winners. Yes. Oh come on, let me tell you, Jesus is our master and he has won. That's what makes it good fight. Good fight means I won. I've defeated the enemy. Say, my son, my daughter, hey, look at the devil going. Here comes Satan. But don't, don't shake. I defeated him already. Mm -hmm. Just believe in me. And I believe in Christ. I hold on to his word. I'm looking up to him. And I'm applying what he asked me to apply. And all that. And I pin the devil down. And all that. That's a good fight. That's a good fight. This warfare is a good fight. God wants us to fight good fight in this warfare. Not allow the devil to over, overcome you. Now I understand sometimes a child of God goes through something. Yes, because the devil goes like a toothless bulldog. Toothless bulldog. Have you seen? Have you seen a bulldog? 
Praise the Lord. Imagine the bulldog, as massive as it is, he does not have teeth. So he has not even opened his mouth. So people are already scared. The way is coming. The way is coming. People are already scared. But somebody that knows that he has no, he does not have teeth again. Praise the Lord. You know that what Satan says is irrelevant. <laughs> Hallelujah. What Satan says against you is relevant. It's irrelevant. There is no incantation, no divination against Jacob, neither uh, uh, whatever even against Israel. Hallelujah. What, what counts, what lasts is the word of God. The word of God started creation and the word of God is going to end it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wow, I'm so excited. There's, a, there's something I saw in the book of Revelation. Look at the devil. Look at how he has held the world bound in a way. But thank God for Christ coming. Hallelujah. And we thank God that through, through, through Christians, through the power of God, many have, been, many have been set free. There is no religion on earth that sets people free from sin. No religion on earth that sets people free from Satan. No religion on earth. No religion on earth. Hallelujah. That gives salvation. Praise the Lord. God has given authority to the church. He has given authority to people who believe in him. Hallelujah. Amen. I would say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. We're talking about spiritual warfare. The victory is already down. Can I have an amen? amen? That's what gives us assurance. I have seen people delivered. Many people delivered from, from demonic pains. I'm telling you, demons, spirits, Tough demons, tough spirits. I've seen them deliver. I've seen where cases initially the demons will say no. They, they will say no. I'm not going out. I'm not going out. I'm not going out. I stand and I will because uh, listen, you must have stamina in the word of God. Mm. And was, I stand. I will stand in the word of God and demand the release of that child of God of that person who had agreed together with me or have agreed with that they should be set free, having renounced. The works of darkness. Satan has no right to keep anybody down. He has no right to keep anybody down. As long as you renounce and you stand by faith, you renounce, you renounce the activity. I don't care how far you've gone. Once you say no to all the activities of Satan, I don't know how deep you've gone into strength covenant. Once you say no, Satan has no power over you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me give you one secret. Satan, Satan actually, Satan was an alien. To, to planet earth he's not supposed to operate on planet earth he has no he has no authority to operate on planet earth when god created the world god created the world for man god made man to be the first god satan did not have the physical human body the only people qualified to rule the earth are those who have who have earth suits they have this body they were created from the dust of the ground to meet up with things in the world. God breathed, in, breathed into, into, into the mass, mass, mass of clay that he made. When the Bible says he made Adam, so he breathed into his nostrils and Adam became a living soul. So living souls are supposed to rule on earth. Not spirits. Mm. Satan was spirit. He was cast down. So, but he needed a body to function. He's, Satan is useless on earth without, without a human body. Satan is useless on earth without human brains. Satan is useless on earth without human, human fingers, human legs, human hands, human containers. He's a spirit. He's a spirit. All that Satan has achieved so far, like he has done, the wicked things he has done on earth, he just needed a cooperation of man. Any man that agrees to the words of Satan, he uses the person. That was what happened. Satan could not pluck, could not pluck the fruit. Hear me, I'm giving you some revelation. Satan could not pluck the fruit from the fruit of from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He didn't pluck it and and and, and put it inside Eve's mouth and force it down his uh, down her throat. No, he couldn't. He got he got Eve through words, and Eve Eve. Lend him. Satan borrowed Eve's mind. He borrowed Eve's brain. He borrowed Eve's hands. He borrowed Eve's eyes. So she looked at the fruit and she saw that the fruit was desired to, 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 to have and was pleasant to the eyes. 
You can imagine she was already sal salivating before she got it. She borrowed the devil. And then guess what? She borrowed the devil the usage of her hand. And she used her hand to pluck it. Reason why many people will end up in hell is because they will be blaming Satan for what Satan did. But the issue is that there's a corporation. Somebody cooperated. You gave Satan your mind, you gave Satan your brain, you gave Satan your parts. Even Shaq Sashin said, Satan did not remove your trousers. Satan did not remove your pants. He didn't do that. Praise the Lord. You willingly, you willingly submitted. You did. So when, what? So salvation is, is a will. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible tells us that we rest not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principality. Against principalities, uh -huh. powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, how do we how do we wrestle? Which means we're wrestling against spirits. So how do we wrestle to win? One of the best things I all have loved, one of the things about Jesus, so best, you know, excellent about him, is that he has not left us in the dark. He will not send us on a warfare at our own church. Shall we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Are we there? Yes. Okay. Who goeth a warfare anytime at his own charge or charges? Who planted a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? No. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is Satan that won't want somebody who planted, who, 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 uh, how do you put it? Um, who, who feedeth a flock? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's Satan that won't want that person to eat, to drink from the milk of the flock. It is Satan that won't want somebody that go to warfare, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. and win. It is Satan that won't want somebody who plants a vineyard to reap what, what he ought to plant. But our God is a God that he, he, will, he will make you to reap. He will tell you to sow, and he wants you to reap. Praise the Lord. He will lead you into warfare, and he will lead you out a winner. Mm. Praise the Lord. But well, Satan will engage in a warfare, and he wants you to win. He wants you to lose. But thank God, Jesus has made Satan to lose. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God the glory. I remember many years back, I was dealing with a tough case. Myself and my wife that time were cutting. We're dealing with a very tough case. It was it was a it was a a, 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 a lady. The enemy really used used this lady, and then we, we encountered a, a particular spirit in her. We we're praying. She was bound, and the spirit said it was not going out. I said, "Come out!" And the spirit said, "I'm not going." I said, "What?" I said, "Come out!" I'm telling you, this was talking from my, my mouth. I said, "I'm not going." I just looked. I said, I'm going to show you. This, you are better have knowledge of what God has done. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know what Jesus has done? He's done in the past, right? 2,000 years ago, about Abi is still relevant to today. It's still relevant to tomorrow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. That is one thing we will look back to. Amen. Amen. They say you don't look back to you don't look back to the things that you have done. Abi. But you face forward, praise the Lord. But we look back, we look back to the things that Jesus has done so that we can bring it forward. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That things you shouldn't forget. So I told that spirit, I told that lying spirit. I said, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell the angels of God to show you the film show of how of how uh, your, your master, how my master Jesus defeated your master, Satan. And the, and the spirit started to cry. The demon started to cry. And said, no, no, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. The moment the spirit said, I don't want to see it, I knew, oh, God. I spoke that by faith. And I said, oh, angels of God, show this, show this demon. Show this demon. The film show. You think, it's, you think, you think heaven didn't record? You think heaven didn't record? God who gave man, who gave man idea to have memory card. 
to have to have television, to have uh, what do you call it, to have phones, praise the Lord, and to have camera to record. You think that God, who created the camera, gave us brain? He he, he cannot record. He does not have praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Guess what? I'm sure when we get to heaven, we're going to sit down to watch. Heaven is going to be, is not going to be bored. I'm going to begin to tell God, God, show me. I want to I want to watch that film show. I want to watch that film show again. How Jesus, how Jesus Christ defeated defeated Satan. We were told that uh, he collected the keys of hell and death. Oh Lord, let us see. Praise the Lord. Guess what? Through the word of God, I know so. So the moment I told the angel, angel, show. The spirit started to cry. Ah, I don't want to say. I don't want to say. Ah, and cried out. It was out. The Bible tells us of how was it Philip or Stephen who went and ministered and then demons cried out with loud voice out of men and people were delivered. Great healings. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to trust God that in this end time, if shortly before Jesus Christ comes, praise the Lord, Amen. we're going to have great visitation again. There will be an outpouring, a fresh outpouring of the anointing of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Upon, upon people. Amen. Amen. They will be casting out of demons. There will be disgrace, serious disgrace. Against the kingdom of Satan. Against Satan. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. To assure everybody. Amen. That indeed Jesus Christ defeated Satan. Hallelujah. Amen. We are talking about spiritual warfare. Be rest assured. If Jesus Christ defeated him 2,000 years ago, he is still defeated. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan is still defeated. Jesus is still winning. Amen. Amen. Jesus is still winning. He is the victor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, we give God the glory. We give God the praise. Hallelujah. So if you look at verse 10, just 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 few things and then we'll, we'll close today. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 10 of that. Uh, um, um, okay, no, let's look at that. First Corinthians 9, verse 7 again. Who go at a warfare any, uh, at any time at his own charges? God has not left you alone. Praise the Lord. He will equip you. There is no soldier that goes on the war front, on the war front and the federal might of his country didn't support him. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let me say this. No single person actually goes on the war on the war front. We have a group of soldiers, army, that go on the war front. Right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I want us to understand something. I, I will get them. I will get them. As body of Christ, as a body of Christ, we're supposed to fight together. Mm. Praise the Lord. Okay, fighting your own battles is different from 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 fighting in a war. Battles and war, then they don't they don't they are, they, are, they they look as if the same, but it's not. You must learn how to overcome your battles, and then get yourself before you get yourself engaged in the war. There's a warfare raging against church. When Jesus Christ was talking in the book of Matthew chapter 16, he meant war against the church. There are little, little battles that we need to overcome through the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. I think we just have to leave that. Let's go back to Ephesians quickly. Let's go to Ephesians chapter, chapter 6. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, I want you to know one thing. If the devil is putting anything on you, if the devil is putting anything on you, know that, know that, know that he has been defeated. Take your victory back. Take your victory back. Hallelujah. Take what God has given unto you. Take it back. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let the devil know that you know and that you know and you know so surely that Jesus has defeated him. Ah. And it is it's by the word of God. Right. This is the revelation of God's word must stand, stand upon. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, help us. Help us, help us, help us. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I, I wanted to say something, but let me just, let me, let me just, let me just, let me just leave it there. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let me say something. Praise the Lord. I want to say something as I, as, I, as I round up. Okay? I want to say something right now. Please just hold on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hmm. Who is the God beside our God? And who is the rock beside our God? A fortress and a shield, the power of deliverance is his. Trouble to trust in him. 
He trains, He trains our hands to war. He leads us in His triumph forever. Praise His name forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Believers face a spiritual, face spiritual conflict with Satan and a host of evil spirits. Listen. Number one. Satan engages the ungodly to stand against us. Satan will always engage the ungodly to stand against us. I'm going to take this fully next time because of time I'm wrapping up. Praise the Lord. Number two. Satan will cause help to oppose the will of God for a child of God. God wants his will established in your life, but Satan will want to oppose that will. Number three, believers have frequent attacks from Satan because he wants to discourage them. He wants to make them look at it that this word of God, after all, is not working. But I tell you, God's word works. Mm. Praise the Lord. Let me say this. No matter what you're going through in life, it does not, it does not cancel. It does not cancel the fact that Satan has already been defeated. Mm. I want you to know that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I, I wind up with this. I come from a family where and tribe where they believe so much in this masquerade. And the masquerade of our town is such that such masquerades they cover from head to foot. Like this is Jebu masquerade, you see them, you know, cover from head to foot. Once they are pursuing you, before you know it, one at one is almost catching up with you. They, they had ne they, they, there has never been any story where they fell, even with all their, all their, uh, their feet covered or running. And each time we talk about we talk about them, they say, shh, the spirit of the ground is listening. That's what they told us. Now I gave my love to Jesus, and Jesus introduced me to warfare, and I got to understand that Satan has been defeated. And I kept preaching to my people, preaching to my mom, preaching to my parents. They would say, ah, don't say so. Don't say this. Until one day, God gave me a revelation. And I found myself dealing with that spirit. Seriously. And then crowd gathered. I'm just cutting it short. Crowd gathered. And when they gathered, they were asking me, what happened? And I began to narrate. It was like, it was like evangelism. And then I woke up. I told my mom, Mama, all that you are talking about. At this time, my mom had given her life to Christ. I was my mom, my mom now gave the secret. All those elders, there are people behind masquerades. They know the secrets. They know the charms. They know the covenants. And now reveal how she went into the bush to go and cut firewood and saw where the costume of that masquerade we call spirit. They say, hey, he's hearing. <laughs> People have magnified. They, 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 they wash, they wash the, the costume and put it, put it to dry inside the bush. <laughs> it means the human being that we call spirit. Many people have magnified the works of Satan. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come against that knowledge. Amen. Let this truth of the word of God remove all that. There is no power ex elsewhere except in Jesus, yes. except in God. Hallelujah. Amen. And he has given us power over, you know, he said over, he has given us authority over the power of darkness, power of, of, of Satan, power of evil. He said, and no, come on, he said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are a winner. Amen. I agree with you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
every power of the enemy against you be broken Amen. entirely in Jesus name in Jesus name over your business over your family over over your life over your wife over your husband over your children over your career in the, over your studies in the name of Jesus Christ over this nation Nigeria we decree the power of Satan be broken we command that the power of coronavirus be broken God told us to take coronavirus as an enemy and so a lot of things have been unveiled today it's a pointer to all that are all pointers and therefore in the name of Jesus Christ God will disgrace those who are behind it Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. they are covered by the blood of Jesus Amen. you are a winner Amen. remember that you are a winner all the time yes Amen Amen there's no time to be less a winner a winner mm, all the time. God bless Amen Hallelujah Amen Amen, Amen. Amen. see you tomorrow Maybe service. Amen? Amen. At 6 p.m. I'm your host, Christopher AK1. Senior Pastor of Grace Finishers Assembly. Amen. Bye bye.